the ITJ and the ENTP. While these two types are oftentimes very different to one another, at least on a behavioral level, it is very important to bear in mind that they have essentially the same cognitive functions. With the greatest difference between these two types being the fact that their functions are of the reverse orientation to one another. In this video, I'm gonna break down for you the fundamental components of each of these respective cognitive types and impart a framework to you with which to tell the difference between the INTJ and the ENTP. So first, let's compare the dominant functions. The dominant functions of the INTJ are introverted intuition and introverted feeling. Therefore, we have a type gazing plethorically at an internal emotional landscape. Introverted intuition gazing into introverted feeling is highly kaleidoscopic in nature. Generally, emotions are the sum of an archetype, of an overall construct, a symbol, a metaphor, rather than specific individual components. And this kaleidoscopic nature of this environment also lends a type of highly self-transformative attitude. Because rather than emotions being made of these tiny little minuscule blocks, as in the case of an introverted sensing introverted feeling, the INTJ experiences emotions as a form of waves, this constant undulating environment, whereby an archetypal representation of an emotional state is almost necessary to stop the type being lost within a sea of emotional change. The emotional environment of the INTJ is oftentimes intense and plethoric, and often gives the INTJ a highly mysterious nature, even to themselves. But through the construction of archetypes in order to explain their behavior, through the use of metaphor and symbolism, the type actually becomes even more self-aware perhaps than another type. While the INTJ tends to be similar to the ISFP in the way that they use metaphor and symbolism and archetypes in order to understand their emotions, forming attachments to various constructs within fiction, for example, the INTJ happily dips into introverted sensing to be more emotionally specific. And it is this combination of introverted intuition and introverted sensing that makes the INTJ one of the most naturally aware of their own innate sense of character, of their values, of who they are. And even the most concrete in their identity, because for all their power to change their identity according to the external circumstances, such change is by the INTJ's undoing, by their own choice. And it is this control of their introverted feeling, attached as it is to their introverted, intuitive, dominant lens, gives the INTJ this kind of, this sense of privacy, this sense of emotional autonomy because they are in control of their own emotional state and as such that control shall be contained within their own self and not given to other people. So as such we have a type who's highly self-aware but is also existing within this kaleidoscopic sea of introverted feeling undulation. Introverted intuition attached as it is to introverted feeling makes the type highly self-transformative and working towards a future whereby they can maximize their own potential. And as such, the INTJ tends to be a highly private individual. Their primary utility is in forming a kaleidoscopic view of their internal emotional state and enacting change upon their own emotional world, because this is where they are in control. And in some ways you might think this would make it easy to tell the difference between an INTJ and an ENTP, because obviously an ENTP is an extroverted fear. However, it is important to keep in mind that ENTP still has the same functions in the dominant stack. The ENTP is still highly private. The ENTP is still highly self-transformative and they have an equally kaleidoscopic experience of their internal emotional landscape. However, this INTJ side to the ENTP is actually operating within this type at an unconscious level, and we'll be addressing levels of consciousness within a later part of the video. But as these orientations, the orientations of the INTJ's dominant stack are unconscious within the ENTP, the ENTP's dominant stack is instead extroverted intuition and extroverted feeling. And as such, this is a type who gazes externally at a plethoric emotional landscape. Whereas the INTJ takes responsibility for their own emotions within their own plethoric landscape, the ENTP takes responsibility for the emotions of other people. Whereas the INTJ feels deeply any emotional dissonance within their own internal world, the ENTP feels strongly the emotional dissonance within the external world. And this gives both types a certain kind of empathy. The INTJ's empathy is more relational in nature because of their deep connection to their own introverted, intuitive, emotional state, they can quite easily relate their own emotional environment to that of another person. Whereas the ENTP, being an extroverted feeler, has a high degree of mirror empathy. And as such, the ENTP tends to feel the emotions around them within the moment, within the situation, because they are essentially mirroring the emotions of another person. The cause of the emotion, the context of the emotion, is less relevant to the ENTP because they are engaging mirror empathy more than they are relational empathy. And while the intensity of either of these functions within either of these types is very much dependent upon 
the intensity, the magnitude of a specific function within a specific individual, in presenting the extremes of each type, the ENTP will be much more attuned to the external emotional atmosphere, whereas the INTJ will be much more attuned to the internal emotional atmosphere. And in behavioural terms, the ENTP will be seen essentially controlling a social situation, taking responsibility for another person's emotions or for the emotions of a group, perceiving as they are a wave, the pattern, a palette of emotions across an extroverted intuitive environment. And the future tense orientation of extroverted intuition tends to give the ENTP an emotionally predictive nature. They can predict the emotional responses of another person and take control of any given social situation. But oftentimes this is at the behest of a desire for novelty, because any future tense lens is going to be seeking novelty, new connections. And as such, the ENTP will be seeking new social connections, new forms of humour, for example. And just as introverted intuition, introverted feeling is the playground, the primary utility of the INTJ, the playground of the ENTP is extroverted intuition and extroverted feeling. Therefore, just as the INTJ takes control of their own emotions, the ENTP takes control of the emotions of others. And while taking that statement out of context, you can very well use it to support this nonsensical sociopath stereotype. Well, so oftentimes the reverse is true. The ENTP takes responsibility for other people in order to enhance another person's situation. They generally take responsibility for another person's emotions, not to abuse that person, not to hurt that person, but so oftentimes due to their highly intense mirror empathetic capability, use their skill set, use this primary emotional utility to enhance the life of another person, to improve another person. So oftentimes the ENTP is altruistic so much more than they are sociopathic. And I'm hoping that over time we can begin to steer this area of psychology away from these rather nonsensical and groundless stereotypes. So a quick summary, the INTJ takes control of their own emotions, whereas the ENTP takes control of the emotions of another person. The INTJ experiences their emotions in a kaleidoscopic, plethoric manner that gives them a self-transformative attitude as they head towards a future improved version of themselves, and also gives them a highly potent relational empathetic capacity, whereby they don't necessarily need to have experienced exactly the same thing as another person in order to essentially relate to that person's circumstances on an emotional level. The ENTP, on the other hand, has an equally plethoric view of external emotion, Therefore, they are good at controlling crowds, they're good at speaking to a group of people and seamlessly navigating a complicated emotional environment. The INTJ's intuitive novelty seeking is generally within their own emotional state, and as such, they seek to improve upon themselves. They are in charge of their identity, and their identity is that which upon they build. The ENTP, however, seeks social novelty, novelty of social interaction. They're less concerned with their own internal novelty and more concerned with the novelty of their own social experience. They'll generally have a wide array of social circles and they'll often keenly pursue the art of humour. And now let's take the opposing stack. The opposing stack of the INTJ is extroverted sensing and extroverted thinking. Therefore, this is a type who gazes very specifically at objects within the external world. Being the opposing function, the INTJ tends to employ extroverted sensing in a very efficient manner. When they do decide to use it in a convergent manner, for example, to enact change upon the world, they've generally been storing up a lot of energy and motivation in order to employ it at its highest possible efficiency. Therefore, the type will be focusing very specifically on something that they are highly invested in in order to maximise the result. And because they're containing their field of view to such a small portion of the world, generally they'll be very effective at accomplishing their goals. The INTJ is not someone who likes to do a thousand things at once, quite the reverse. The INTJ is very focused in where they spend their extroverted thinking energies. And when an INTJ has reached the sufficient level of emotional investment, generally very little will stop them in achieving their goals because they can focus all of this extroverted thinking energy into this narrow, very specific scope of extroverted sensing. However, predominantly being the opposing stack, the INTJ's extroverted sensing and extroverted thinking are more observational in nature. Therefore, there's a type who's very acutely aware of the external order of the extroverted sensing world. They do not gaze plethorically around them as an extroverted intuitive would, such as an ENFP, but rather they contain their gaze to what they're focused on. And within that scope, within that field of view, they'll be highly aware of efficiency. They will be highly aware of whether or not things are moving in logical accord. And again, owing to the divergent nature of the INTJ's extroverted sensing and extroverted thinking, the INTJ will generally grasp the fundamental elements behind any given external mechanism 
very quickly, very easily. Be it a sport, be it a game, be it a mathematical equation, the INTJ will generally be able to grasp extroverted thinking, that is, external manifestations of logical order, constructs in a fairly quick and efficient way. Because whereas another type, such as an INFJ, will be seeking to experiment upon it and learn in a kinesthetic manner, the INTJ will often just intuitively understand how one component within this extroverted sensing external world is interacting with another one. And as these various components begin to fit together, the INTJ can move their extroverted sensing gaze around it, gradually accommodating more and more until they've gained the big picture. But I cannot stress enough that the INTJ uses their extroverted thinking alongside an extroverted sensing lens. And owing to the hyperdivergent nature of this extroverted sensing lens, the INTJ is very picky with what they gaze upon. And as such, the type can be fairly dismissive of that which they do not emotionally relate to and even can manifest a certain kind of tunnel vision. But it is also due to this hyper-specific gaze that the INTJ can put a vast amount of energy and concentration into acquiring masterful control over any given extroverted thinking medium. And again, while the ENTP shares the same functions, the orientations aforementioned and in the INTJ's case are within the ENTP unconscious. And as such, the orientations of these functions that are conscious within the ENTP are introverted sense and connected to introverted thinking. And as such, while the INTJ is highly observant of the external mechanical minutia, the ENTP is highly observant of the internal mechanical minutia. They are observant of their own introverted thinking frameworks. They are observant of principles, of definitions, of their own internal understanding on an introverted sensing, highly specific level of how that which they are emotionally invested in operates. But on that note, it is important to mention that while an ETP does have to be emotionally invested into something in order to pursue it, since their feeling function on a conscious level is predominantly oriented externally, the ENTP invests more heavily in that which has a social utility. And therefore the ENTP's framework will be constructed according to what they can communicate to another person, what they can show off, for example, to another person. What will win them praise? What will increase their standing within society or within any given social group that the ENTP values? And ultimately, what will enhance the ENTP's social utility? Similar to the INTJ, the ENTP can employ their oppositional function, introvert sensing in this case, in a highly convergent manner. And when they do so, they gaze at very specific components in order to refine and fine tune definitions. In order to essentially allow an anticipation of social expenditure to carry them, to motivate them, in order to gaze very specifically at any given logical definition and component by component, step by step, gradually improve their own field of understanding. And as such, the ENTP's learning style tends to be highly sequential. And just as the INTJ must store a great deal of emotional energy into enacting change upon the world, the ENTP will generally have to store up a great deal of emotional motivation or even anticipation of beneficial emotional circumstances in order to change their own frameworks, in order to reinvent their frameworks, reinvent their ways of doing things and begin to fine tune and alter definitions, alter their frameworks within their brains. But predominantly, most of the time, the ENTP tends to be more observant of existing logical frameworks. Contrary to popular rumour, the ENTP isn't this mad scientist experiment with a thousand things at once. Actually, the ENTP is very precise in their logical cogitations. And just as the INTJ likes to focus on one external task at once, the ENTP tends to direct their introvert sensing lens towards one particular field of expertise at a time. And since these two functions are within the ENTP primarily divergent, generally the ENTP will be much more observant of their existing introverted thinking frameworks. And so oftentimes the ENTP's frameworks will be so absent their own responsibility, the ENTP will generally be doing the same thing over and over again. And while over time they will be fine-tuning this framework, the framework itself will generally stay the same. Because just as the INTJ does not take a plethoric view of the external mechanical world, they instead focus on very specific portions of it, the ENTP can inherit a tunnel vision relating to their own introvert thinking framework. So the holistic structure of the framework remains pretty much the same, whereas the only thing that they may necessarily change are very specific pieces within that framework. But it is this consistency of frameworking which can actually make up for the ENTP's uncertainty of introverted feeling character. And on that note, let's now move on to the levels of consciousness. So the ENTP tends to have a highly unconscious 
introverted intuition and introverted feeling. Therefore, this is a type who is often relatively uncertain about their own identity, about their own values. And this is often where the, in my opinion, highly inaccurate devil's advocate and debater stereotypes come from. It's not that the ENTP actually likes to play devil's advocate, it's just that they are often uncertain about what they actually believe in. And they use the devil's advocate thing, the debater thing, in order to justify to other people their own lack of emotional certainty. Because in reality, the ENTP is very consistent in the logic. They tend to argue pretty much the same things. But oftentimes the ENTP will feel contrary and therefore they'll use this kind of devil's advocate analogy in order to largely justify to themselves why they don't necessarily believe the things that they're arguing. But moving on from that slight segue, the kaleidoscopic nature of the ETP's internal emotional experience alongside the unconsciousness of this introverted feeling world tends to make the ETP quite uncertain about who they are. And oftentimes the ETP will invest into their framework, into their field of expertise to such a degree as to effectively build an identity upon it in order to make up for their own lack of awareness of their values. Because the fact is, just like the INTJ, the ENTP has very strong values. What differs from the INTJ is the awareness of these values. And it is this lack of natural awareness of their values and identity, which often leads the ENTP to use as a kind of placeholder for their values, for their identity, their expertise, the utility. I can do this and therefore I am this thing. Or instead, owing to the extrovert feeling and their convergence stack, rely on the affirmation of other people, rely on the words of other people in order to form their identity for them. And largely all because the ENTP isn't aware that they already have a strong identity within their own unconscious. And this is yet another instance in which this rather ridiculous sociopath stereotype comes in because the ENTP is not aware of their emotions and therefore they may even say to others, oftentimes misguidedly, that they feel like they're a sociopath. And others with a somewhat basic level of understanding of this field of psychology may see a lack of consciousness as equivalent to a lack of existence, a lack of magnitude. When in reality, these two things are mutually exclusive. The ENTP has a very strong introverted feeling. They have a very strong relational empathy. They're just not always aware of it in the first place. And furthermore, owing to the future tense orientation of introverted intuition, the ENTP, while they will be unconsciously moving towards this self-transformative vision, this vision will again be rather unconscious. Therefore, in conscious terms, the ETP may very well rely on employing the same social utility, the same highly refined frameworks over and over and over again, ad libitum, ad nauseum. But when they rely overly on their introvert sensing, introvert thinking frameworks, which they generally don't take a lot of responsibility for a lot of the time, and thus don't change, they tend to limit their own self-transformative capacity because they get stuck within this loop. So just as the ETP has a highly unconscious introverted intuition and introverted feeling, the INTJ has a highly unconscious extroverted intuition and extroverted feeling. And therefore, while the INTJ still has these functions, they still have a certain degree of magnitude. Oftentimes the INTJ is very much unconscious of these functions. They're very much unconscious of the plethoric emotional atmosphere. And the more people you add to any given equation, the more undulating waves of emotions existing outside their own head the more the INTJ will tend to disassociate, the more the INTJ will feel disconnected from reality. Because generally, since the INTJ takes so much responsibility for their own emotions, they have very little energy or impetus to take responsibility for the emotions of other people, at least not in the same way that the ENTP would. Because whereas the ENTP often takes the emotions of other people in their stride, the INTJ tends to stray away from them because they're directing this emotional energy internally into their own emotional landscape. And oftentimes the INTJ may very well take the long way round in which they relate to another person and then they use facts, they use logic in order to help another person out of a situation that they themselves have related to. And oftentimes this will be a more common employment of what would be regarded as emotional behaviour than simply interacting with the world on a plethoric emotional level. And just as the ENTP tends to be in a state of uncertainty about their own values, about their own emotional state, the INTJ, on the other hand, tends to be uncertain about the values of other people, the emotions of other people. However, just because the extrovert feeling of the INTJ is not conscious, it does not mean it is not strong. And just as the ENTP can very much over rely upon their introvert thinking frameworks in order to compensate for the lack of conscious awareness of introvert feeling, the INTJ can very well try to make up for their lack of extroverted feeling awareness by overly relying 
upon external structure, external hierarchies, qualifications, rule sets, for example. And when they over-rely on such frameworks, they tend to subdue their extroverted feeling and perpetuate a stereotype that does not necessarily always hold up in real life. And now let's take the opposing stacks. The opposing stack, the ENTJ, which is unconscious, tends to be extroverted sensing and extroverted thinking. However, extroverted sensing is highly conscious within the ENTP as an important dip function to the dominant. This is to say the ENTP is oftentimes focusing on specific details in their external world, but that is from the standpoint of the dominant function. And therefore, they take a plethoric gaze and then they hone into relevant details. But since they're only using it as a dip function, generally the higher magnitudes of extroverted sensing, the more atomic scale of reality, for example, tends to be a blind spot of the ENTP. And since this extroverted sensing unconsciousness is connected in this instance to extroverted thinking, the ENTP may very well bypass the extroverted feeling in order to use extroverted thinking in a very loose manner alongside extroverted intuition. And in this instance, the ENTP will just be seeing extroverted thinking information in a highly plethoric and vague manner and be consulting a big picture point of view while oftentimes missing out on the finer details. And as such, when extroverted thinking is conscious within the ENTP, it is largely when it is being loosely employed alongside extroverted intuition as a kind of sub-utility. And when the ENTP is actually employing extroverted thinking from the position of the divergent stack, it's generally in a more unconscious level. They are observing the order is not being maintained in the external world, and they may very well begin to get angry without necessarily knowing why they're getting angry in the first place. And it is also the sub-utility employment of extroverted thinking alongside extroverted intuition that gives the ENTP the mechanistic novelty seeking that they are known for. But it is always important to keep in mind that the primary utility is social and therefore TE in this instance is oftentimes a dip function alongside extroverted feeling. In the ITJ's instance, we have an unconscious introverted sensing and introverted thinking. In the case of introverted sensing, it is used primarily in a conscious manner as a dip function to introverted intuition. The more developed this axis is, the better the INTJ will be able to hone in to specific details within their brain. However, since this dip capability is fairly low in magnitude, generally the INTJ will not be employing the maximum amount of introverted sensing at the same level of specificity in relation to introverted thinking frameworks or even introverted feeling landscapes as the ENTP. Also similar to the ENTP, the INTJ's introverted thinking tends to be employed alongside introverted intuition on a more conscious level than it is alongside introverted sensing. Oftentimes, the INTJ will bypass their introverted feeling in order to consult a kind of vague, plethoric understanding of their introverted thinking circuits, even though these circuits on their magnitude level are primarily informed by introverted sensing. And therefore, we have highly specifically informed circuits that are being consulted, referenced on a more vague, introverted, intuitive level as a sub-utility to the dominant stack of introverted intuition and introverted feeling. But as introverted intuition alongside a sub-utility of introverted thinking and an unconscious introverted sensing and alongside introverted thinking in a divergent stack, and so vague by nature, the ITJ often has a difficult time recollecting the train of thought. Oftentimes they'll need to externalize logical order in order to understand something. For example, an ITJ will often rely on diagrams in order to understand a thought process. They'll often rely on a practical means of demonstrating something to somebody else, demonstrating a principle, for example. Whereas the ENTP will generally have a very easy time consulting on a very specific level, going to that thinking circuits and using their extrovert intuition and extrovert feeling in order to communicate these circuits to another person. So, a brief summary. The ENTP has an unconscious introvert feeling and introvert intuition. Therefore, this is a type who's highly unaware of their own values, of their own internal emotions. Oftentimes they're so fixated upon the emotions of other people and taking responsibility for them, they oftentimes neglect their own. And oftentimes the ENTP can even drive themselves into a fairly unhealthy emotional state because they're not necessarily predicting their own emotional needs. Because again, they're focusing on predicting the emotional responses of another person. The ITJ, on the other hand, is a complete reverse of this. They oftentimes are so fixated on their own values, upon their own emotions, that they tend to neglect the emotions of other people outside the realms of relational empathy. And oftentimes the INTJ will rely upon the development of their own relational empathetic capacity in order to make up for their lack of conscious extroverted feeling. The ENTP tends to lack a specific SE application of extroverted thinking and therefore they tend to be unaware of the minutiae, of the microscopic details of external reality. Whereas the INTJ tends to be unaware of the microscopic details of their own introverted thinking landscape. Oftentimes relying upon external manifestations of logical order, such as diagrams and mathematical equations, 
in order to demonstrate and indeed elucidate logical principles. And now let us visit the attitudes in more depth. The INTJ's introverted intuition and introverted feeling are highly convergent. This means these functions are within this type's control. They are looking across this vast kaleidoscopic emotional landscape and oftentimes are using symbols and metaphors in order to understand their own emotional fluctuations and very much employing such tools in order to steer a course towards self-transformation. The INTJ can pick and choose who they relate to in a similar way that they can pick and choose what emotions or what emotional state is going to be dealt with at any particular time. And oftentimes an INTJ will take time out in order to deal with their emotions and very effectively conceal these emotions from other people because it's important to keep in mind because the introvert feeling of the INTJ is convergent, it is within their own control. And that's such not only can the INTJ conceal their emotions very efficiently, they can also very specifically choose whom they want to relate to and whom they do not. And generally, as the INTJ grows in their employment of that convergent auxiliary, introvert feeling, they will be able to relate to a lot more people and they will often become a lot more comfortable forging new relationships as they become more confident in their employment of introverted feeling. And it is also important to note that the extroverted intuition and extroverted feeling of the INTJ have also converged. So even though they are oftentimes unconscious and even neglected by the INTJ, they are still a realm in which the INTJ who is confident within these functions, especially the unconscious employment of these functions, is willing to exert influence and take responsibility. The ETP, however, takes the application of extroverted intuition and extrovert feeling in their stride. And since these functions are convergent, they are very much the playing field of the ENTP. This is where the ENTP exerts their greatest degree of influence. This is where the ENTP takes responsibility. The ENTP takes responsibility for the emotions of other people across a wide plethoric view of the external world and seamlessly steers a social situation towards a predicted outcome. And just as with the INTJ's introverted feeling, the more developed an ENTP's extroverted feeling, the more they are willing to take on, the more responsibility they are willing to take for a greater amount of people within any given social situation. And it is the unconscious conversion functions of the ENTP that can often give the ENTP, in a stereotypical manner at least, a slightly INFJ slant. Because after receiving a highly potent mirror empathetic charge, they can relate directly to another person using introverted feeling and then activate their introverted intuition in order to foresee a better future for that person. And even when these functions, as they often are, are operating at a more unconscious level, the ENTP is often unknowingly trying to better another person, trying to even save another person. And oftentimes the savior complex analogy, sometimes attributed to INFJs within the more pop realm of this field of psychology, very much applies to ENTPs as well. And within these circumstances, the ENTP is highly unaware of just how much they are invested in the improvement of another person. And in typical ENTP fashion, they will often be putting the emotions of another person before that of their own. And now let's take the attitudes of the opposing stacks. The INTJ's extroverted sensing and extroverted thinking are highly divergent in nature. These are functions that the INTJ does not actively take responsibility for much of the time, but rather adheres to. The authority function of the INTJ is extroverted thinking, and therefore the INTJ very much adheres to logical order of the external world. Oftentimes the type will value such things as qualifications, various manifestations, of external order, such things as hierarchy, for example, and will often thrive within a frameworking situation, a very structured external world, and more specifically still, a world in which these structures are supplied to the INTJ, because the INTJ's utility is to relate to external order from their divergent stack, and as such, the INTJ tends to spend less time innovating their own structures and more time adhering to existing ones. And owing to the highly observational capacity of divergent functions, the INTJ can actually very quickly understand any given external situation. And the INTJ will often very much prefer to, for example, read a manual before they begin playing around with something. They'll often prefer to understand how something operates at a fundamental level before they begin themselves playing with it, because divergence takes precedence over convergence. But it is the divergent nature of their thinking function that gives the INTJ a certain aptitude towards excelling in certain academic environments, because wherever there is order to adhere by, the INTJ will often excel. And while introverted thinking and introverted sensing are unconscious, they still have an equally authoritative and divergent role. And as such, the INTJ tends to become stressed out when they see another person acting illogically, especially when that illogical action interferes with their own efficiency. And while an INFJ, for example, such as myself, will become very stressed out in an emotionally disorganized situation, 
The ITJ's pressure point relates much more to mechanical order, whether or not a task is going in a most effective manner. But because they do not naturally take responsibility for the innovation of any given system, reframeworking, for example, the INTJ will become even more stressed out because they are in a situation in which they have to operate to a imperfect framework, but all the while not being willing to change that frameworks for the betterment of other people. For example, if an INTJ was performing a job with shoddy software, the INTJ wouldn't necessarily want to implement changes to that software, especially if it is not within their job description, but this will lead them to get even more stressed out than they would have been otherwise because they have to work with, they have to adhere to this extrovert thinking authority in an environment which is chaotic and disorganized. And that's such the INTJ has very high standards for extrovert thinking order. It makes it even more essential for the INTJ to be able to relate to something on an emotional level and ensure that it is in accord with their own values and their own future happiness and prosperity before they begin enacting change upon it. The authority function of the ENTP, however, is introvert thinking. Therefore, while the INTJ adheres to external logic, the ENTP adheres to their own internal frameworks. And whenever those frameworks are contradicted by people, whenever those frameworks or whenever another person acts according to a framework which the ENTP deems highly inferior to their own, the ENTP will be highly stressed out. And this owes largely to the fact that the ENTP does not want to take responsibility for the framework and thus they do not want to change it, but it also owes to the fact that they are so naturally relational. When another person is using a different framework to their own, they feel slightly insecure that their own framework may not be good enough, that there might be something wrong with their framework, and thus, since the TI is the authority function of the ENTP themselves. Generally, an ENTP cannot stand it when somebody is speaking outside of the realm of science because SI TI is highly scientific by nature, highly specific, and thus, when somebody is contradicting science, when someone is speaking in favour of something which isn't necessarily supported by scientific literature, the ENTP will often feel so personally aggrieved that it is often an effort of will for the ENTP to actually contain the criticism. And this may very well be where this debater archetype comes from, because the ENTP is highly logical, and the ENTP does become noticeably stressed out when their logic is being contradicted by another person, or when another person is acting in complete disregard to a TI logic that as the authority function of the stack, the ENTP holds dear. And furthermore, since the introvert is sensing, introvert thinking frameworks of the ENTP are divergent, these are very much frameworks that the ENTP abides by. The ENTP tends to take very little responsibility for changing these frameworks outside of a very small realm. For example, an ENTP will often relentlessly engage a social skill set in order to enhance their own social utility. And outside the realm of tinkering, will generally spend very little time changing that framework. And similar to the INTJ, the ENTP is also someone who has a very observational learning style. Whereas the INTJ tends to learn by observing external manifestations of logic, the ENTP learns by observing manifestations of frameworks. They will learn a method of doing something, for example. Oftentimes the ENTP is highly methodological. And when learning any new skill, the ENTP will often look for existing forms of that skill and either seek to replicate it or even read a manual or watch a tutorial, for example, on YouTube in order to learn to do it the same way as the other person. And it is after this initial observational divergent learning process that the ENTP might begin to innovate upon that skill set. So both these types of convergent feelers and divergent thinkers. Convergent feelers tend to relate themselves to the world around them, tend to emotionally adapt to logic. They tend to pick and choose whom they relate to and whom they socially engage with, and can generally choose what emotions they want to show to any one person. In the ENTP's case, since the emotions are directed externally, they'll still be very private, they'll still be very choosy with whom they interact, particularly when it comes to sharing more private, intimate details. And especially when forming connections that go beyond the transient. But all the while, because they're extrovert feelers, they may not necessarily be as adept at hiding their emotions as an INTJ would. However, to make up for this lack of natural aptitude concealing their emotions, an ENTP will often put on a mask of happiness, for example, in order to conceal a perhaps deleterious emotional state from another person and still give another person a good social experience, despite the fact that the ENTP doesn't necessarily feel all that great inside. The INTJ, however, will be much more choosy with whom they relate to on an introverted feeling level and be much more able to naturally conceal 
an emotion from another person without needing to put on a mask of extroverted feeling. And whereas the ETP tends to socialize with many groups of people on behalf of a logical framework, the INTJ tends to relate to various forms of emotional substrate on behalf of their extroverted thinking authority. Both types of divergent thinkers, and therefore they're both individuals who prefer to consult existing literature and consult existing methodologies rather than create their own, and oftentimes abide by a logical authority. The logical authority in the ENTP's case is introverted thinking, and therefore it is their own framework, their own understanding of doing things. But this isn't necessarily their own in a subjective sense, but rather their own in the sense of accumulated pieces of information that they've taken in from such things as tutorials. The INTJ's thinking authority on the other hand is external, and therefore the INTJ seeks to abide by existing external manifestations of logical order, such as hierarchies, systems of qualification, any kind of ranking system. These are near and dear to an INTJ because oftentimes they measure their own worth based upon how they fit as an individual within this external world of order. So thank you so much for watching the video. I hope it was informative and definitely let me know if you have any more questions down below in the comments. And I'd absolutely love to know your own stories of the empathetic capabilities of both of these types, because the fact is both of these types have a bad rep for being sociopathic or psychopathic, for being, you know, the villains of various films, for being manipulative or perhaps even just emotionally disconnected. When in reality, this is far from the case. Both these types are very empathetic. Both these types are extremely emotional and oftentimes so altruistic even when compared to other types. And as such, I'd absolutely love to hear your own tales of ENTP and INTJ empaths. Furthermore, I do offer my own type service. Definitely check that out if you're interested. You can find more information on my website. Be sure to leave a like and share the video with anyone who you think might benefit from it. And if you haven't already done so, make sure to click that subscribe button down below with the bell icon next to it to stay notified of future content. I upload at least one video every single week, so I'll be back same place, same time next week. For now, take care.